estimated 17 babies are born with permanent significant bilateral hearing loss every day. And as hearing loss is invisible in nature, it's impossible to detect through routine clinical examinations. And as a result, it's been described as a silent and overlooked epidemic in developing countries such as South Africa. And newborn hearing screening programs in hospital offer offer caregivers a choice to have their infant's hearing screen as soon as 12 hours after birth using objective physiological automated devices which are safe and comfortable and which take a few minutes to conduct. And in this way, infants born with a moderate to profound hearing loss can be detected. So the goal of newborn hearing screening and early intervention is to minimize the negative effects of hearing loss on infant development. And a large body of research has shown that um, infants who are um, identified with a hearing loss and for whom appropriate intervention is put in place, they develop superior speech, language, social, emotional development than their later identified peers. Um, however, the average age for hearing loss identification in the Western Cape is 23 months of age. So in South Africa, there's an absence of legislation and a lack of awareness of the importance of hearing screening. And as a result, the initial detection of hearing loss is typically delayed. About 16 to 45% of the population access the private healthcare sector where hearing screening services are typically unstructured, unsystematic, restricted to urban areas, and they are mostly as a result of individual efforts. So, um, about 53% of birthing units in the private healthcare sector do offer hearing screening, but this means that the system is a lottery and um, more than 90% of infants in South Africa will not have access to newborn hearing screening services. So there are some challenges facing hearing screening in South Africa. One of those is caregiver screen refusal. As hearing screening is not mandatory, caregivers may decline hearing screening. The services are admitted from hospital services, um, birthing packages, institutional policies, and medical insurance does not always cover the costs, so caregivers are then left to, to cover the costs themselves. Um, there's also a lack of awareness of the importance of hearing screening amongst caregivers and healthcare professionals. In the public healthcare sector, this is exacerbated by a lack of training, equipment, and staff shortages. Another challenge facing newborn hearing screening in South Africa is a poor follow-up return rate for those infants who have failed the initial screen. And hearing screening programs in South Africa have not met the recommended benchmarks of 70%. And the failure of caregivers to bring their infants for follow-up rescreen may lead to delays in identification of hearing loss. However, this is a global concern across the whole world. So this investigation consisted of three components. Sorry. Um, a retrospective record review at two private hospitals in the Western Cape. A uh, prospective telephonic survey um, investigating caregiver reasons for screen refusal. Another survey investigating caregiver reasons for follow-up default. And the study was conducted at two private hospitals in different areas of the Western Cape. And according to the latest census, the demographics of the communities these hospitals serve differ greatly. Where Hospital A is a more affluent and educated predominantly white community, Hospital B is a less affluent, um, relatively socially deprived, predominantly coloured community with lower levels of education. The retrospective record review entailed reviewing hearing screening test forms of infants involved in these two hearing screening programmes, and studies two and three involved um, prospective telephonic interviews with caregivers who declined the initial hearing screening and those who failed to bring their the infants for follow-up rescreen. And the telephonic surveys were only conducted in Hospital B because there was a high number of participants and a higher rate of screen decline and follow-up default. So results from the retrospective review indicate that very few caregivers and hospital 
A declined hearing screening for their infants, while almost half declined screening for their infants in Hospital B. Uh, so cover, coverage differed between the hospitals, and this may partly be attributed to the difference in the demographics of the communities that the hospitals serve. Um, almost all the, in, all the caregivers had medical insurance, but often these are just hospitalization packages which do not cover the cost of the hearing screening. In a study in Gauteng, when newborn hearing screening was included in the birthing package, the coverage increased from 20% to 75%. Further results indicated that the initial referral rate of both hospitals was two to four times higher than the recommended 5%, despite similar protocols and quality control measures. Um, this may be partly attributed to the higher annual birth rate of Hospital B. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, the follow-up return rate at both hospitals was also below national, national benchmarks, which is 75%. And unsatisfactory referral and follow-up return rates place an added burden on newborn hearing screening resources and influence tracking negatively. There was a statistically significant difference between the infants who passed the hearing screening at initial screen and those who failed, so that can lead us to conclude the older the infant is, the more likely they are to pass the hearing screening. So the, we normally test on the day of discharge that they, they go home from hospital. The re results of the telephonic interview for caregiver reasons for screen refusal indicate that although nearly all the caregivers had medical insurance, it's possible that this was merely a hospital plan covering hospitalization, birthing costs, and not hearing screening costs. Just over a third, had, third of the caregivers had previous knowledge of hearing screening. Only 40% felt that hearing screening was reliable, and most believed that there was no effective treatment available for hearing loss. So these could all be contributing factors to screen refusal. Although almost all uh, reported that they would have agreed to hearing screening if it was included in the hospitalization cost or the birthing package. And almost all caregivers felt that hearing screening was important. So why did they refuse hearing screening? And the reason most commonly given for screen refusal was the failure of medical insurance to cover the costs and the perception that hearing screening was unnecessary. So this supports for the inclusion of hearing screening in hospitalization birthing packages and medical insurance. And it highlights the importance of caregiver awareness and education, which is vital for the successful implementation of newborn hearing screening programs. The study furthermore indicated that caregivers who received written information were more likely to report that hearing screening was extremely important, that there was effective treatment available and that the audiologist was the person responsible for hearing screening compared to the, the caregivers who did not receive written information. So a number of caregivers declined hearing screening because the pediatrician did not rem recommend the, the, the service and over half of the caregivers refused hearing screening who refused hearing screening believed that the pediatrician was the person responsible for hearing screening. So this emphasizes the importance for physician support of newborn hearing screening and that a limited awareness of the importance of hearing screening amongst healthcare professionals has undermines the successful implementation of hearing screening services. So results of the telephonic survey in investigating caregiver reasons for follow-up default indicated that there was an increased caregiver knowledge of the importance of newborn hearing screening and intervention. And this can be attributed to the fact that 80% of the caregivers received written information from an audiologist. 60% were aware of the recommendation to bring their infant for follow-up rescreen. So why did they not return? So the reason most frequently given for care, the reason most frequently given was that caregivers' <coughs> perception that follow-up was unnecessary, and that they had forgotten about the follow-up recommendation. And findings revealed that only half of their caregivers indicated that they were aware of the screen result, and only 60% indicated that they were aware of the recommendation for follow-up. So this emphasizes the importance of effective communication to the caregiver regarding the screen results and the recommendation of, for follow-up, 
which is then accompanied by written information. And if a, a follow-up appointment is immediately confirmed, um, then follow-up compliance can be, should be improved. And um, caregiver education at pre-birthing opportunities is furthermore very important. The findings also indicated that the hearing screening costs are an important concern for caregivers and influence not only the screen refusal but also the follow-up return rate. One in four caregivers defaulted on follow-up because they forgot to bring their infant for rescreening. So this emphasizes the importance of effective data management and tracking protocols by dedicated personnel through the use of telephone calls, text messages, and visual reminders, and this should facilitate the follow-up compliance and follow-up rate. So in conclusion, the, finding of the findings of the study indicate that hearing screening must be made mandatory and part of national policy, should be supported by public awareness campaigns and caregiver and healthcare professional education of the importance of hearing screening. Thank you. Thank you.